So the takeover of Manchester United is set to enter the third and final stage this week. A lot of people saying what's going on with the takeover. It's been over a week since the second bid went in. It's been over a week since that deadline. We're meant to hear back by the end of March, the 1st of April. What is going on? Well, in today's video, I'm going to update you on everything you need to know with the takeover, what the stage is right now, everything that we know so far that is relevant and what's likely to happen within the next week regarding the takeover, the third stage and what's expected to happen. We'll also talk a little bit about the Newcastle game. Three players could be out injured, which could be three big misses. As well as, you know, today is a Saturday and we saw Liverpool absolutely get pumped by Manchester City. So smash a like if you like it when Liverpool lose. Even though I don't like watching Man City win, because Liverpool 7-0, 7-up trophy, they've not won a game since. You might have beaten us 7-0, but you haven't won a game since. If we win against Newcastle tomorrow, we go 10 points clear of you. So you're going to have no trophies. You might not finish in the top four, but you've got your 7-up cup. So smash a like if you're happy with the Liverpool loss. Unfortunately, Arsenal did win. Arsenal just look absolutely incredible at the moment and can't stop winning in it. It's doing my head because I don't like it when Arsenal win. But Chelsea are playing right now and obviously Chelsea could turn it around. But the first half from Chelsea was absolutely horrific. So more and more need for United to beat Newcastle because our main competitors for top four are probably Newcastle and Tottenham. I think it's between United, Newcastle and Tottenham for that third and fourth space. And with Casemiro being out for three games, with our drop off with all the games we're playing, this game is a six-pointer. These are our biggest competition in the race for top four. So it's really important we go into the Newcastle game tomorrow and get a win. A draw is not the end of the world, but really important that I think we do get a win because Newcastle and Spurs aren't too far behind us. And we will talk about that a little bit more in depth in tomorrow morning's video. But I want to get right into the takeover news. I want to update you guys with what's going on with the takeover and then we'll talk about the game. So it was said at the beginning of March that obviously Sergio Macliff and Sheikh Yassim have been told by brokers in recent days they're advanced to do the second stage of a free stage sale process. They're still waiting for more detailed financial information after tabling their indicative offers. So this was about a month ago. They were, they were invited to the second stage of the takeover and they said it's a free stage sale process. We've always been told it's a free stage sale process. We've basically done stage two. They've put their second bids in. Stage two is basically done. I was just reading that out to remind you guys it's a free it's a free stage process. Now, what we know so far is we've got a serious bid from, we've got three full takeover bids, which is obviously that Thomas Silicus guy, Sergio Ratcliffe, and obviously Qatar, Shit Yassim. We obviously know that Shit Yassim and Sergio Ratcliffe's bids are taken seriously, and they are serious bids that are meant to be well record bids, and there has been a minority investment. The only one we're aware of is the Elliott Group. But what we know is basically there's three serious offers seem to be the Elliott Group for minority investment, Shit Yassim, and of course, Sergeant Ratcliffe. Now, reportedly, the Glazers are sort of pushing more towards the full sale. The rain groups of the goal was the full sale. Romana said the full sale seems more likely, but you can't rule out the Glazers staying. The financial report suggests that the Glazers have to sell. The Glazers have been warned about financial implications if they stay and also found outrage if they stay. The feeling is that United is sort of drifting towards a full sale. So if that is the case, what goes on in the takeover? So Jim Ratcliffe and Qatar have put in a bid. You know, what's going to happen now? You know, what what is happening with these bids? Romano said that both big bidders, Sheikh Yassim and Sergio Ratcliffe, are the two favourites to buy United. And obviously it was then said by Rob Dawson the other day that after the latest round of offers, bidders are now waiting to hear from the Rain Group. The US Bank are working with the Glazers on what the next stage of the process will look like. The Rain Group could invite a third round of offers or name a preferred bidder. So what we know so far and what we know at the moment is the second bids have gone in. The rain group's going out with, over that with the Glazers. And it was said end of end of March, beginning of April, they will discuss what this third round will entail. Now, this third round will entail maybe a third bid. It could be a bid off just between Qatar and Sir Jim. This third round could be actually someone being chosen and taken into the preferred round, a preferred bid of being chosen. And I think, you know, we, you know what is happening with the takeover now is we're either going to go into a third round and all the bidders are going to have to put another round of bidding in, which is likely with the Glazers because they probably just drag it on to get as much money, or a preferred bid is going to be chosen to go into the third round. And if a preferred bidder is chosen, they're very likely to be the next owners of United. Now, United Mappeteers tweeted something that I thought was interesting that I want to read out. And they said... Um, it's good that there are two solid bids of over five billion, and I believe that the end result will still be the sale. But when stories um, about the six billion price tag came out, I warned that I didn't think that was quite right. So this is a bit more what I expect to see and why I think there could be a third round of bidding. So basically they're saying, you know, the Glazers want six billion. It's very obvious the Glazers want six billion. The bids from Qatar and Sergio Ratcliffe were a little over five billion. Massive bids, world record breaking bids. But the worst stories coming out saying, you know what, like, the Qatar bid and the Sergio Ratcliffe bid doesn't reach the six billion price tag. The Glazers might stay. The Glazers might pick the Elliott Group. 
la di la di la di la di da now i think the six billion price tag is very unrealistic especially considering the debt we're in the financial implications we're in and the amount of investment that we needed in the club but we know the glazers, glazers they're greedy now what i think is going on with the takeover is i do think there's going to be a third round of bidding announced because i think the bid sh fall short the six billion price tag and the glazers want to get as much money as possible for united i believe that in the next few days they're going to announce the third round of bidding. Now, that might be wrong. They might choose Qatar or they might choose Sajim or they might even choose the Elliott Group as their preferred bidder and they will go in a third and final stage and probably wrap up the deal, get it done and be the next owners, which would be nice if they just picked Qatar, made them the next owners so they can come in very early. But I wouldn't be shocked if next week we get wind of a third round of bidding because one thing that United like to do is they like to drag on processes you know, you know, it's the excitement of the sale, but it's not exciting anymore. It's just the process that's being dragged on. The excitement of signing Sancho, the excitement of signing De Jong just became this process that was dragged on. And we know what the Glazers are like. They drag on process. They take their time. They like to get as much money as possible. They know if they do a third round of bidding, Qatar and Sajjan Ratcliffe are going to have to up their bid. And the reason I think they will do a third round of bidding is because I don't think they're actually going to upset the Elliott Group. I think they want the full sale. The financial reports came out showing we're a billion in debt, showing the Glazers can't really stay with the amount of financial issues they've got. I very much believe the full sale happened. Romano saying the favourites are the two bids for the full sale. You know, everyone in the, in the sort of United zone who's a reliable journalist believes the full sale was most likely. And I believe because the Glazers are focusing on the full sale, they wouldn't have given Qatar or Surgeon Ratcliffe that extension. You know, all the minority bids came in that are they're reportedly really happy with and high enough, but yet they're giving extensions to the full sale. I think that they want the full sale. The rain group's looking for a full sale. And I think what they're going to do, this third round, could just be a third round of bidding. They can either choose a preferred bidder and they can get the deal done and sorted, or they can go in a third round of bids because they didn't get the six billion they wanted to try and force Qatar and Surgeon Ratcliffe to raising their offer. Because at the end of the day, the Glazers don't care about the time limit. They don't care if the, this is done ages and ten arms doesn't get some of them don't care they only care about their pockets they only care about their money and they know how much money Qatar have they know Qatar have ridiculous amounts of money Qatar's aim is to only just outbid Sergio and Ratcliffe so they can buy United and be the strongest bidder and the Glazers probably know that so the Glazers want that Qatar bid to not just be stronger than Sergio and Ratcliffe but to be higher so if they force Sergio and Ratcliffe to make a high bid they're then forcing Qatar to make a high bid because the belief is the Glazers will have to sell because of the financial implications as well um you know there's obviously the bids haven't reached six billion there is a lot of stories that the Glazers are threatening to stay because they haven't reached six billion and the Glazers won't sell for anything under six billion but again some sources came out said this is a negotiation tactic by the Glazers they are likely to sell for something around five billion price tag but they put the six billion price tag there as a benchmark because that's what they'd ideally like but they'd be willing to compromise between five and six billion Qatar reportedly offered around 5.5 .5 billion so Jim Ratcliffe's offered five billion the Glazers would be silly to turn that down what we know so far about the bids as well from the Telegraph they said sources close to Sheikh Yassim say he's very confident of having the most attractive offer and Sky Sports said that Sheikh Yassim's second bid for Manchester United is said to be considered as rational as well as highly competitive so a lot of reliable sources are saying in Romano and is that Sergeant Ratcliffe and Sheikh Yassim are the two favourites to buy United but other reliable sources are saying Sheikh Yassim is very confident Sheikh Yassim believes he'll be the next owner and his offer is very attractive but also other reports saying that Sheikh Yassim's offer is highly competitive and you know other sources have been saying that their offers believe to be the highest their offers believed to be the best and Sheikh Yassim is very confident he'll be the next owner of United. It was said by the Mail that those close to Sheikh Yassim's team say he remains confident of success and has ample funds not just to buy United but to invest hugely into the stadium squad and local community. And the thing, Sir Jim, the thing Sheikh Yassim has over Sergeant Ratcliffe is Sergeant Ratcliffe has to borrow money to buy the club and once he's bought the club he can't invest in it right away. Whereas Sheikh Yassim has the money to buy the club, 100% of the club, clear the debt and invest in all these facilities right from the get-go because Sheikh Yassim and Qatar have mass amounts of money, which is why I think the Glazers are delaying the deal because they want to get as much money out of Sheikh Yassim as possible. I think why there's so many media stories saying one minute they might stay and one minute they might go is because they want to get money out of Sheikh Yassim. As soon as we heard that the, the bids were expected that week, there were so many stories about them staying. Fake stories about Sergio Ratcliffe going to bid this much and this much and this much. I think it's all games to get Qatar to rise their bid. I think the fact that the rain group went to Qatar and said, look, we're going to extend the deadline if you want, la di la di la and, and the Qatar took it, said to me, you know, the Glazers want more and more money out of Qatar and Sir Jim. There was a rumour that both Qatar and Sir Jim did put a second bid in and they were told it wasn't high enough and they got to revise the offer and put a higher second bid in as well. That's a rumour, however, that was never proved. It was said by The Sun that Source... Uh, close to, um, source said that Sheikh Yassim has been very clear he wants to buy United and has the money to do so he's been impressed with the Glazers and would like to work with them in the future and this links to a story that they'd, they'd offer them NFL games in Qatar now what we do know is that the Glazers have spent a lot of time in Qatar the Glazers want a good business relationship with the Middle East 
Uh, we know that for a fact, and that might give Qatar advantage of the resurgent reactor. If Qatar had more meetings and spent more time with the rain group and Glazers, and Qatar had more money than the rain group and Glazers, but do not forget that Sergio Ratcliffe is a United fan. He's very determined to buy the club. He's very determined to acquire the club, and that if he's, he's more determined than Qatar, he could potentially get the club, even if he hasn't got the kind of money Qatar have. You know, Sergio Ratcliffe's more likely to overpay than Qatar, they believe. However, it's also said Qatar wouldn't have gone to the effort of making a 9-2 foundation, hiring people and putting this, this and this in place if they weren't determined to get United and Qatar and let it go. But we've got two people fighting over United and Jim Ratcliffe and Qatar whose full sell bids are high enough. They're appropriate bids and they could be invited into a third round of bidding. Potentially, if not, one of them could be chosen to be the preferred bidder who will likely be the next owners. And it's been reported because of the Glazers financial situation. You know, they can't they're not in a position where they could turn down over five billion of pure profit from investors. So that is the real I think positive on the news today is that Qatar are the favourite. The, the takeover is about to go into the third round. Something's going to happen very, very soon. The full sale seems most likely and obviously reports that Qatar's bid is the highest. Now, obviously, this isn't really new news. This is a summary of all the news that's come out in the last month and a half. But I kind of wanted to make this video to just sort of say where the takeover is at, what's likely to happen. And the main points is a three stage process, as I've said. You know, Qatar, the full sale seems more likely. The Glazers, the belief is the Glazers will have to do the full sale, but don't rule them out, rule them out staying. Qatar are the favourites so far, but you don't know. That seems to be the, posi the position of the takeover. So let me know your thoughts. I hope you found this video informing. Please do smash that like button. Of course, subscribe down below. I think we're going to get a big breaking news story very soon. Hopefully it's positive. So do subscribe for that.